Hello, very good evening. In today's lecture, we will learn about Maya's script editor for scripting using MEL language. Now, MEL is Maya's embedded language that allows you to write scripts and code to do uh, tons of stuff automatically within Maya. We will get into more details of MEL later on. But in order to you do MEL, you need to learn something about script editor because again, script editor is where, where all the MEL commands go and where the all magic happens. Now, in order to access the script editor, we have various different options available. My name is Dr. Dishan Bardi. If you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe this channel, hit that bell icon, please support this channel and we will be posting more videos on Maya and Mail language scripting regularly. Let's begin. Now, in order to use Mail scripting, you need to access script editor and there are several ways to do so within Maya. If you come inside Maya, at the right bottom corner, you will find this icon here. Click on this icon and it will open the script editor. This icon is available in the, within the command line and feedback line in opposite adjacent to that. So this will open a script editor. The another way of accessing your script editor is by going into Windows, General Editors and you will find a script editor here as well. So you can click on that, the same script editor will pop up. Third is that if you are going into your programming, you can go into your panels and you can access the script editor from here and your entire panel will be now based on script editor as well. Similarly, you can use the multiple layouts, two pane or three pane, and then you can use a script editor and or the perspective view or whatever view basically you want to work with uh, adjacently. Depends on how you basically want to work. Similarly, um, these are two, three different ways and you can create a shortcut for that as well. For now, what I do is I come into script editor. Now, once we are here, there are a few things that you need to understand to use before we dive into various different things. The first thing you right away see is the turn of code that's written here since you opened Maya. Now, the advantage of Mel is uh, that Maya is entirely based on Mel, Maya embedded language. Maya uses Mel language to do everything inside Maya. Okay, so in other words, uh, when they started developing this software, they developed it, its own language called MEL and now everything is based on this language. The beauty of it is that it gives you the code openly. It's like an open source code that you can see every single code of every single action that you perform within Maya. That way you can write your own code, you can customize operations, you can automate and create plugins for yourself. Technically, scripting is not for plugins, but you write a scripts that do tons of jobs for you, like a plugin would work. Okay, so this is what happens. So since I opened Maya and I did some work from selecting to deleting to creating objects, this is the code and this is the called the code window. Okay, where you see your source code being actually displayed to you. So every operation you do. So for example, if I come back here, I go inside the create menu. I go inside polycube, I create a sphere. So you can see this, that it gave me the code to create that sphere. And the sphere is on my viewport. And it has this code that it created a polysphere with minus R, L, a minus SX, XY, AX, and all these parameters with a particular value. We will get into the, what these each parameter represent later on. So don't worry about that right now. For now, that understand that, okay, in order to create sphere, this is the default code. Similarly, if I come down here, this is the coding area where we actually write our own code. So this is where you write your MEL code. You can write the Python code within the Python window. These are called scripting tabs. You can create more tabs as well by clicking on this plus icon. As soon as you do that, a window will pop up asking you whether you want a MEL code window or a Python because these are two different things. And based on what you are doing, it will run the code within that particular environment. So for now, if I click on MEL, it will create another MEL window here. If I click on this again, another MEL, so I can open as many MEL windows as I want, do as many code snippets as I want and testing with them. So all I do is I need to write the code here, for example, polycube and press a semicolon here. So this is where I write the code for it. Once I do, in order to execute this code, I come back into this shelf here. There are a few buttons here. For example, play. If I click on this, it will write, execute this code, polycube. Error, cannot find the procedure polycube. There is some error here. Actually, it's supposed to be cube. So I give a cube here. So now you note, as soon as I write, it changes its color because now it recognizes, ah, okay, this is a mel command and it changes its color. Second, when we generated an error, this is the error at line one. So these line numbers are here automatically given. So for every line that you enter, you would find that it's already numbered. Helpful in terms of debugging that, okay, where my error is when your code becomes very big. Same error is generated on your feedback line as well. 
this polycube now if I select this code and execute it will display polycube result polycube one was created if I come inside my viewport you would find that somewhere around here there is a polycube created for me okay now uh, where is my polycube one I think I've selected both the geometries here it is my polycube is created okay so now I come back here so this is how we execute uh, so we select the code we execute if you don't select the code and you click on the execute button what happens is that it executes the code but it vanishes from here as well because now it assumes that you have executed the code so two things happens if I write the code here again polycube semicolon this will basically mean that I want to execute this particular line of code if I select it what happens is that it executes the code creates the polycube 3 object but the code still remains here if I don't select it and execute it it executes the object creates now the fourth object however the code vanishes from here so these are two things that you need to be very careful about when we start working with mel uh, when we execute the code if you write the command for example select polycube1 if I select it and click on execute it will select polycube1 and you can see that object is selected in my channel box also in my viewport it will also be selected however if I don't select this object this piece of code and execute it it will get it will vanish from me so that's two things to remember the shortcut of executing this is that you select it you press control enter if you press control key and enter at the same time it will execute so there's a shortcut for this play button is control enter okay just enter will go a new line but if you press control enter it will execute the code control enter would basically execute the code so if it is not selected here it will vanish from here and the code will get executed at this point and that object would is basically selected here okay so this is basically a simple channel box other than that uh, this is where all our commands get displayed and this is how we basically learn about mel that's how easy it becomes so it gives me that particular code in other words if i come back inside and let's just close this panels let's go into save layouts and let me open my where is my perspective and script editor where is it where is it where is it um, hey it should be here it should be here it should be here it's not here it's not here so what i do is i go two panels side by side and in this panel i will open my what we call panels and script editor okay so we have a script editor here and we have a panel available here so if i select an object for example in this case sphere as soon as i select it see the code displays select minus r now what is minus r these are basically additional properties like i said don't worry about them right now we will talk about these in detail in, in the next lecture okay so at this point basically it gives you the code if i select this object move it it says select minus r cube one i get the source code and the source code to move that object so i can do that myself as well so i can say okay do this thing select or oh, let's just rename this object so i select this cube and i name it my cube okay i said okay so as soon as i rename it see this it also give you the source code as well so this is the code we use for rename so that's why script editor and mel is so fantastic within maya i don't think any other language or tool or software gives you this kind of access that it gives you the source code itself of every operation that you perform and that's what makes it learning very easy so now you have a code of renaming an object as well so if you want to write your own script that renames an object for you you know what command to use so in this case my cube is there now i can write select my cube semicolon semicolon indicates that there is this one line of code is ended s e l e c t spelling mistake be careful with that then I can say move this object now move is again a command that we used here we move this object ourselves I can say move minus r minus r basically means in relation to so wherever the object is currently in relation to this current object move it to its next destination place okay so I can say move it to in x 0 y can be 10 and z can be 0 semicolon so these three values that represent for example this one value x y and z separated by space so x space y space z so now what i've told it that go inside my cube select it then move it this much units so i select this code press ctrl enter and my object that has polycube one got selected 
and now it has been moved 10 units in relation to it. So now remember when we use minus r, this means that previously wherever this object was, moved 10 units from it. So that's why previously I had moved it down and now from that location it moved relation to that. So for example, let me give you an example. I move it to 5, okay, from the outliner. See this, what happens? Set attribute my cube 5. This is setting an exact value, okay. Set adder is another attribute. There's a fourth lecture series, we will find it, in which I will discuss set adder and get adder. You will come into it, uh, so don't worry about that. As like I said, there are lots of codes available. So when we change a value directly here, basically we are giving it an absolute value. That I want this cube to be absolutely at 5 pixels or at 5 units in distance, all right? So in order to do that, we use set adder attribute. Again, discuss detail in later on lectures. That's why, subscribe so you can follow my lectures that are coming. When we use move minus r, it basically means that in relation to its current position, wherever the object is at its current point, move it 10 units in y. So when I re-execute this piece of code, press control enter. Now see this where object is, it gets moved to its 15. Because previously it was at 5, from that point move 10 units. From the 5th location, now when we add 10, the final destination becomes 10. Perfect, you know. So now you get the move command as well. The move command moves the object in whatever direction you want to move it into. So I can use move again, minus R. There are other tags as well. For now, let's just work with minus R. I can say 5 in X, 0 in Y, 0 in Z. Now this would basically mean that whatever the current location of the object is, from that point, move 5 pixels to X. From that point, move 5 pixels. This would not mean that the set the value of this object to 5 and then 0, 0. If that would be the case, the object would come down it to its 0 location in Y and then move only in X. But if I execute this code, you, okay, only this line. Okay, so if I execute all, all will get executed. I just want to execute this line. So I select it, <coughs> control enter. Now you see that whichever object was last selected, got moved 5 pixels in X from its current location from its current location. So previously, if I just press Control Z or if, okay, if I come here, sorry, Control Z, Control Z, it's already 0.000 something. So if I set it to zero, now its absolute value has been set using set at R. So this is the script editor. We write the script here. We see the feedback of our script. We see the feedback in our viewport. We execute the code from here or we press Control Enter. Okay, we will get into these commands in next future lectures. We will go into move and set adder and get adder and other commands in detail. Once you are here, you would find there are some menus as well. From file, you can open the script, you can save your scripts, you can source these scripts, which I will show you in future classes as well, where we write a script that does certain actions and we create a button for it so that you don't have to open it again and again. We save it into our preferences windows, we will come into it. You can even save this to your shelf as well. So whatever script you're working with, you can click here and you can save it into script as a, as a shelf button here as well, which we tried to do in previous class from the command line using middle mouse button, but the middle mouse of my mouse is somehow not working. So coming back to here, so file edit, again, having a standard edit options, history, now this is where it's important. Echo all commands is currently turned off. So whatever you're getting here is our, the basic actions that you're performing within your Mel and Maya, okay? So for example, selecting an object. That's one action. But moving your cursor is again another operation that you're performing, which is not echoed here in terms of source code. Moving your camera is again another action that doesn't changes or is not echoed here. From perspective view to different view, I can change view. Okay, I'm rotating my camera. These are again some other actions that I'm performing. But these commands are not echoed here. If I turn into an echo all commands, what this basically means that now every action is being echoed. So DR update, all these commands, see this, every time I update my camera, this action gets echoed here. I change this view, I change it back, all these, see this, hotbox was released, panel pop-up, all these commands are basically being displayed. Sometimes, 90%, they would not be useful to you. That's why, initially, Maya has given you that, okay, if you don't want to see every single bit of action that you want are performing here, just turn the echo off. What this happens, then now the main tool-based actions, whatever tools you are performing, tools that are operating on an object, those commands will be echoed. 
makes our life much more easy. Okay. Similarly, these are few other options. Suppress certain commands if you don't want to show them. Commands itself, which commands show line numbers or not. Command completion, how you want to do that and so on and so forth. Tabs, you can create new tabs. You can rename the tabs as well. You can go to previous tab, next tab. I'm talking about these tabs as well. So I can rename this tab as into my test and then I hit rename and it becomes my test. Okay, so you really can rename these tabs as well. Panels, you can same as these panel perspective, you can change this to any other perspective panels as well. Okay, help, this is something that we will be using on help on mel command as well in few future classes that how you can use help for mel. It's a separate lecture. Again, follow my channel and you will find out more lectures on that. Okay, similarly, these open save commands here well. Some commands that I have used in terms of edit is clear history. Clear input, clear all. These three buttons are again echoed here. Clear history. Now, this is basically known as the history. All your operations in terms of your um, working here are considered as a history. You can click on this button and everything gets wiped off, removed. Okay, so because there's a lot of clutter, sometimes you just want to start afresh and then you can press enter and that afresh is here. So you can clear this button. So going to edit, clear history will clear your history. Clear input, this is the input window where we've written the command. If you are done with it, you can come here and say can clear input and this command is cleared without executing if you want to remove it and if it's lots of code, you don't want to select and delete, delete manually everything, you can use this code. But be careful, it's, you know, it will wipe out and hide all your code with that. Clear everything will basically mean clear everything. So if you don't want to be anything displayed, start afresh, click on this button. You can work with these buttons as well. So this would basically mean that only show me the history panel only show me the input, uh, sorry, input tab. So history panel hidden, show me both, both are displayed. Okay, so these are buttons that you can use. So if you are working just with code and you want, do not worry with the history. So you can click on this. So I have a full panel of my input node available. Then uh, standard numbers. So if you don't want these numbers to be displayed, you can hide that. Execute all code or execute the selected code that you want to execute. These two buttons are displayed here. So this is a little intro on script editor. We would be working with the script editor now in future classes in this entire MEL course where we will learn about these individual commands, saving the commands, saving as a script file and sourcing it, importing it into things. So uh, saving into script file as well uh, and hopefully it will be very interesting for you. So I hope you learned something from here. Um, don't forget to subscribe this channel so you can follow my MEL lectures and future lectures that are coming forth to you. And if you haven't subscribed, do support this channel by subscribing, hitting that bell icon and liking these videos. If you learn, if you want to learn anything specific within Mel, don't forget to comment below so I can uh, reply or post a video with, of that particular issue. This is Dr. Shanbuddin signing off.